I can't wait to cook for you, ladies. <laughs> We're excited to try. Um, so, what well, the menu is really, really interesting. It's a, your classic Filipino dishes, but kind of uh, my take on it as far as like, yeah, growing up Filipino American. Yeah, it's gonna be really <laughs> fun, fun lunch. I'm excited to cook for you, ladies. For Thank sure. you so much yes, for having yes. us. Cool. I'm glad I came hungry. I did not realize it was gonna be courses. I'm stoked. <laughs> I always find it interesting because in my household, we've talked about this mm -hmm. before, but my grandfather never really spoke, spoke Tagalog to us at yeah. all. Um, because when he came here during World War II, mm -hmm. uh, he would just speak uh, Spanish because mm -hmm. he was working in kitchens. Yeah. So didn't grow up with it in my house at all. Mm -hmm. Still to this day, it's mm -hmm. actually really hard in LA to mm -hmm. find a teacher. Because yeah. I thought about doing that as well, mm -hmm. especially during the pandemic. I was like, oh, I could Zoom with someone. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Still, still learning. Actually, there's a lot of Filipinos who can't speak Tagalog yeah. here in America. I, I'm realizing now. So yeah, I can imagine it's hard to find a teacher, but I can teach you. Yeah, I'd love to. And also, <laughs> I, I don't even know because he passed away a long time ago. I don't even know if it was Tagalog was where he mainly spoke or Cebuano because he oh, was from Cebu. So he might be Bisaya. Yeah, he yeah, might be Bisaya. Bisaya. Oh, okay. Yeah, normally people that are Bisaya aren't very well-spoken in Tagalog, mm -hmm. but there are some Visayas that can speak in Tagalog. Interesting. Yeah. But Tagalog is the national language. He would have loved this. And yeah. at the same time, I'm like, he never spoke really about mm -hmm. it. But even though he never really spoke in Tagalog, he did teach you a lot about the culture, right? You were telling me that More you guys- More food. Yeah, you bonded a over cooking. A lot of the food. My family's, like food is one of our love languages. And mm -hmm. so we would be together as a family like this. Mm -hmm at least twice a week uh -huh. and have big dinners where we would all cook together. So mm -hmm. like food wise, yes. But culture wise, no, because he uh, had a complicated mm -hmm. structure because he was the oldest son and mm -hmm. decided to come to the States. So his father didn't speak to him again. Oh, wow. And it was really complicated. And uh -huh. I know that was hard for him. So there was like a disconnect with him and his culture for too. For a while, yeah. Yeah. Not with, again, not with the food. That mm -hmm. was around. But mm -hmm. it's it's interesting. And I it, think there's a lot of people that immigrated for various different reasons that have that story. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting because food is actually a thing that Filipinos do love bonding over. It's like, I would say it's food and like karaoke probably, like singing <laughs> together, you know. I'm glad they did not make us do that one. That is not my forte. <laughs> he would still enjoy nonetheless you have to do karaoke with cole if you both like it because mm -hmm. he loves it he does i do not you don't like karaoke i'm fine witnessing it uh -huh. and taking part as long as it's not like everyone's social mediaing it because yeah, I'm like, no yeah. one needs to remember this okay no one I'm, needs I'm to remember same. me I'm being like off tune boat. singing tony braxton it's so pretty i'm starting with this I'm so excited because what's your fil favorite Filipino dish? I'm a lumpia person. Oh, you love lumpia. I, and okay. it's a fun one to make with your friends mm -hmm. as well. Also, the idea of making like a hundred of something is kind of fun for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise everything you make when you're like making food for friends, mm -hmm. I'm gonna steal one of these. When you're making food for friends, it's not quite as intricate, but uh -huh. funny enough, like having the lineup of people helping you make lumpia is really fun. Yes, it is. And you freeze it's them. It's like a little bonding forever. thing. The idea of eating on camera is new for me. <laughs> it's like a mukbang. Mm. See, I was always unclear on whether mukbang was like a, a fetish thing. <laughs> so, so mukbang apparently in Korean is... It's like ASMR for them? It's a translation, literal translation of eating room. Makes so, sense. So, I don't know. I meant more the viewers, like what do well, they get from it? What do they it? get out of it? Yeah. I don't know. I honestly am obsessed with mukbangs because mm. like every night before I go to sleep, I always get hungry for some reason. So watching other people eat, like eat satiates kind of, that? Yeah. Fascinating. For me, but for other people, it makes them even hungrier. Fair enough. So that was our first dish. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I want to talk a little bit more about like this being your first um, directorial debut and everything. Like, how does it feel for you after like directing music videos, short films, and you know, really waiting for this moment? Like, are you excited, nervous? Do you feel pressured in mm -hmm. any way? 
I mean, as with anything, there's always pressure. But I think the fun thing about this and where it happened and when it happened, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm 34 at this point. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful that it did. I know, I know that for some directors that's very young, but at mm -hmm. the same time for me, I'm glad it didn't happen when I was 25. I'm glad it yeah. didn't happen when I was in these kind of transitional phases of womanhood and mm -hmm. adulthood. At 34, I was really happily secure in where I was at mm -hmm. and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I'd shadowed for many years. Mm -hmm. And like I'm sure in your case too, with where you come into this, you've been working for so long mm -hmm. that even though people are going to be like, this is your first American film, you've done like dozens, you're yeah. fine. Yeah. So none of it was, it didn't feel like we had to jump into a pool and figure out how to swim, at mm -hmm. least for me. That's mm -hmm. not how I felt on set. Yeah. What was it like for you? Well, for me, obviously coming in, I was really nervous because I wanted this so bad. Like I've been dreaming for it for so long and I, I wanted to make a good first impression. Obviously, I wanted to do a good job and make you happy, make everyone who um, casted me happy. Um, but then I realized pretty soon, like after when I started filming with Catherine, especially mm -hmm. that like there was really nothing to be that nervous about because it wasn't as if it was my first time ever. It's not as if I had no experience or I didn't know what I was doing. It's just a completely new environment and new people that I'm working with, um, which is strange because in the Philippines, I didn't get that experience that much. I was, um, I was pretty much working with the same studio for 10 years. And so I got to, I got pretty comfortable working with the same people. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't realize that I had a fear of working with new people. Yeah. And that's what made me so nervous. It's just being outside of my comfort zone and not being around the same directors, producers, actors that I'm used to. Well, and every set is different when it comes to like, if you have a different creative team, they'll mm -hmm. have very different energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Had you ever done a, like a horror or comedy? I know I've you guys, never. you've done like romantic comedies. I've done a bunch of romantic comedies mm. and dramas, but I've never done a horror. So no one else has ever like sprayed you down with blood? No. <laughs> Just me? Have, I'm wait, so sorry. I've had, I've had a little bit of blood from like an action drama series, oh, okay. but it's just, it wasn't nearly as close to the amount of blood that we dealt with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they had to tone down a bit as well after the mm -hmm. fact, because when we made it PG-13, we had to yeah. remove some of your blood. I noticed <laughs> in the screening, I was like, there, I remember They did a really a good more. job of it, but I yeah. was laughing because I was like, oh my God, we put her in so much blood and now we're removing some of it. Yeah. I only knew that because I had to actually have the blood on me. But like when you watch the film, it looks pretty natural. People don't realize how long mm -hmm. it takes to wash off fake blood. Ironically, yeah. longer than real blood. Yeah. Because, it's and this sticky. is not meant to be morbid, but it's sticky. It's yeah. it's usually, it's almost akin to like chocolate syrup. Yeah, it's like sugar-based, right? Yeah. yeah. Usually. I mean, the one that we put on people is usually mm -hmm. sugar-based. So I've been coated in blood like you mm -hmm. were, and it took me hours. Really? Hours. Hours? I feel like mine came off pretty quick though. That's good. Because um, um, Ula, the lady who was doing my makeup, she's an amazing makeup artist. Um, she would put like this clear gel on me before putting the, That's the blood on. That's smart. She basically primed your skin so that yeah, it Yeah, she off. primed my skin. Smart. So I would only have to like soap my hair and my face twice. Well, at least you're also not blonde because mm -hmm. actually that's one of the it problems that happens it. on set is there's been multiple actresses I've worked with that were pink for a couple of days. <laughs> it stains Because it really their hair. does stain. So what would you say was like your biggest fear coming into like directing Lisa Frankenstein? The movie didn't scare me at all. Mm -hmm. It's actually now the like being perceived thing of it coming out. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying for me. People seeing this now. Okay. Is so scary. And how are you coping with that? Not well. <laughs> I'm trying. Do I'm mean? doing the best I can. Um, there's a coping mechanism of me being very well aware of the fact I have no control. Mm -hmm. And people will like it or they won't. They'll find it or they won't. Mm -hmm. So there's comfort in that. Mm -hmm. But it's also really terrifying knowing wholeheartedly that something like we had so much fun making, mm -hmm. that was so many friends, that was so many laughs. Mm -hmm. Their experience with the movie is not colored by anything we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So an audience that sits down comes into it very blind mm -hmm. from what was such a heartwarming experience, which mm -hmm. was so fun being in this place with you guys. Mm -hmm. That's strangely um, very new for me. Mm -hmm. Anything I did before this was small enough that you didn't really feel 
perceived. Mm -hmm. Now I do, and it's really weird. <laughs> I, I would say, or like I would think that you're pretty used to that almost because, you know, growing up in, in this kind of in this industry, like being aware of what goes on and everything, you would kind of expect that that is to come. Kind of, but the thing that is funny about my experience growing up mm -hmm. is I didn't grow up here. I grew up in San Francisco mm -hmm. and I didn't grow up doing the Hollywood thing. Mm -hmm. I would visit dad on set, mm -hmm. but that's a bit like, you know, take your daughter to work day. Yeah. I knew that movies were created by people like dad, by people I grew up around. Mm -hmm. So the magic of them was different for me, mm -hmm. but I didn't do the like parties and things that were very rare that we went yeah. and did a red carpet or anything. So the Hollywood of it all, Is the presentation, mm -hmm. I didn't do. Okay, so it's unfamiliar. Kind, kind of. of. Mm -hmm. And if anything, it was actually made more daunting by being rare. Mm -hmm. Like with, with you and like, even I talk about this with Cole and Catherine because mm -hmm. they do photo shoots and stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. You guys are used to mm -hmm. the presentation and yeah. the expectation. I'm not, mm -hmm. even now. Like, mm -hmm. yes, I acted for a while, but I was never all that popular. I'm not a fashionista. Mm -hmm. I'm not the... So on the directing side, you're really behind the camera. Mm -hmm. Like... I'm hoping that this isn't my future as the presentation side. I like it. It's fine. I'll, I'll deal with it. But like, yeah. I like being on set. I yeah. love being there in like overalls with you guys. Yeah, yeah. And I hang I, back and I let you guys do the stuff in front. Mm -hmm. I totally get you and relate to you on that point, <laughs> actually. <laughs> this looks so good, yeah. Wait, it, let's serve each other first before we, because I know okay. us, we'll just keep talking <laughs> then and we won't eat. What do you want to try first? Let's dive into this guy. I'm going to try this food. one first. I'm curious. I'm going to break the egg. Are we good with the egg? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's funny because um, I really wanted the premiere to be at the cemetery, both because of the parallels with the movie, mm -hmm. but I've also gone to a lot of movies at that cemetery and it's kind of such an LA thing mm -hmm. as well. And they play a lot of 80s films, so it felt really perfect. Yeah. But it's I was curious how people were going to navigate that, because I know for some people, cemeteries are a very different thing. Mm -hmm. um, here, this one is ironically full of a lot of actors and musicians. Yeah. Um, and there are many people that think if you entertain the dead, mm -hmm. they don't follow you home. Oh, so I've never heard that before. My grandmother was someone who very much believed that. Mm -hmm. So I like it, but for you, what is like... The idea of like a cemetery movie when you saw that, what did mm -hmm. you think? I got excited. Okay, I, like I was just <laughs> saying, I, I had like a weird fascination with cemeteries growing up. Um, I went to school in this one school in the province in the Philippines. And right behind the school, there was a cemetery. So I remember one time I cut classes to go to the cemetery and just like check it out and hang out with my girlfriends. But it was crazy while we were there, we saw these... The, like this group of teenage boys mm. digging up one of the graves. And I was like, why are they doing this? And they were- Did you get an answer? <laughs> I think they were excavating like jewelry that- Oh, they were grave robbers. Yeah. Oh. And that was like my first experience with like that. <laughs> well, and then I never there, went back. You mentioned, cause I was really curious about this. There is that area in the Philippines with the graves that are attached to the cliffs yeah. as well, which is fascinating. That is the North. Yeah, that's in Baguio. So there's this area where um, there are coffins hanging off of a cliff. Yeah. And I honestly don't know how they got there. Well, that's what I was curious about, too, because apparently they're like hammered into the cliff wall. Mm -hmm. But I was reading up a lot about it, and I found that really interesting mm -hmm. that there's so many burial practices. Mm -hmm. In the you Philippines. Know. Yeah, well, and where we were in New Orleans, too. Yeah. You can't, we, we fake it in the mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm the water table is like right underneath you. So mm -hmm. you can't dig a hole, it just becomes a well or a lake. Oh, okay, so. So they don't tend to bury the dead underground. Mm -hmm. They're in mausoleums above ground. Mm -hmm. That's why the cemeteries look so different in New Orleans and also mm -hmm. why we had to make our own fake one. Okay. Because you I'm, couldn't like dig that down. I wonder if it's like that in the Philippines too, because there's a lot of mausoleums in the Philippines too. It might be that they can't go down too deep, otherwise it just turns into like to, water. Yeah, probably. In the Philippines, though, going back to what you said earlier mm. about, like, if you entertain the dead, they won't follow you home. We have a practice called um, pug pug. Mm. It means, like, after going to, like, a funeral or seeing anyone dead, you have to stop by someplace before going home. Fair enough. 
So you have to stop by so that the ghost gets left there. And then <laughs> You're you like, Annie's yours now? Yeah. So like normally what I would do is I'd go to a funeral, then go to a coffee shop after and be like, stay here. Like you literally talk to them and be like, stay here. It would make a great show is just all the ghosts that are stuck at like a local and coffee McDonald's shops, and, and they're coffee just shops like, and they're like, oh, <gasps> God damn. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, it was funny too, because I actually was talking to my friend Charles last night, who's going to come to the premiere. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the reason I met you. Yeah. Because he introduced me to Jess and DPD. Mm -hmm. And then through that world of like, oh my God, eating and talking is giving me indigestion. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, through that world of like meeting them mm -hmm. and friendships, I mean, it's so funny because I think, yes, this is a business mm -hmm. and it absolutely functions like one. But when you meet people that you connect to, it's it's been very interesting to navigate like how people respond to that. Because mm -hmm. for me, I love running a set that feels like family. Yeah. If I can, I will absolutely seek that out over anything. Mm -hmm. Because I think you get better performances, you have more trust. Mm -hmm. So when I met you and I immediately was like, okay, she's so lovely and she's mm -hmm. so earnest. And I had been struggling with Taffy because I think on the page, a mm -hmm. lot of people read her as like the mean popular girl. Yeah. I was like, she's not to me. Mm -hmm. So I remember meeting you and being like, I really feel like you should read this thing. And I think yeah. your first response was like, why? <laughs> yeah, because we were meeting over dinner and it was just like, it was just a catch up dinner actually. Cause we met with Charles first. Yeah. And then the second time I met you, I was with James and Jeff, my yeah. management. And it was just a getting to know kind of thing. And then that was the day Lisa Frankenstein got greenlit for mm -hmm. you. And then you were like, I really think you should read for Taffy. And then I was like, why me? <laughs> I was like, you just met me. <laughs> you haven't even seen my filmography yet. And then I was, I was, I was flustered more than anything. Like, obviously I was really happy that you said that, but then I just didn't feel worthy. I feel like, you know, women in general do struggle with that a lot sometimes, mm -hmm. especially right now with mm -hmm. the way, oh, <laughs> I know I saw that too, <laughs> with where the world is at. Mm -hmm. It can be very hard to believe that, you know, sometimes good things are just happening for you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Ooh, where are you gonna dig in first? This one. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna start, I want one of these little whips. All right, hold on. I'm gonna take a piece of this. Cool. <laughs> You like lychee, right? I do. Okay, there's one. I love one. lychee. It's one of the fruits I wish, ah, this is messy, hold that on. That you could grow in your backyard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could grow it. It is not possible here. Mm -hmm. Would be amazing if I could. So what kind of crops do you have right now in well, your backyard? We just transitioned seasons. Mm -hmm. So now it's going into like snap peas and things like that. But I still mm -hmm. have a, I grew a lot of lemongrass this mm -hmm. year. Like for me, gardening is kind of a self-care thing. Mm -hmm. Especially as I got older and through the pandemic as well. Yeah. I found I needed meditative practices that mm -hmm. weren't meditation because mm -hmm. my aphantasia makes meditation really not fun really for me. Really difficult, yeah. Not a good time. Uh -huh. um, but gardening became one of those for me. Mm -hmm. What's one for you? Like, especially you travel all the time. There's yeah. something, it must be pretty portable for you to take mm -hmm. it with you. I would say like the wellness practices that I've kind of... Um, establish over the past two years is really just being more conscious about everything that I consume, mm -hmm. whether that's like food, media that I like yeah. feed my brain, people that I'm talking to. <laughs> like I've made sure to, I actually went on a, a really long detox last year. I stopped watching um, any form of entertainment that had any like violence, mm -hmm. any like anything dark and not good for me because I feel like I was becoming desensitized to like all these horrific things. Fair and enough. I was like, this is not normal. This is not normal for me to think that it's normal. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think how I kind of just take care of myself is just be conscious about anything and everything that I'm, I associate myself with or consume. Mine was, I definitely, over the last couple of years, have kind of completely removed social media from my life. I noticed, but you've been kind of, I'm trying. Back I'm on. trying for the movie. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, posting stuff on stories and things. I Twitter, for the most part, completely left. Oh yeah. It started to really once once it was so clearly like there were just death videos on the main page. I was like, ah, this isn't the world for me anymore. I gotta go. Twitter was like my kryptonite for the longest time. Yeah. Um, I just was obsessed with reading hate tweets about myself. Really? Yeah. Growing up in the industry, it's like 
you initially start reading a lot of the tweets because you enjoy the love and the feedback that you're getting. And for oh. me, it was like, I enjoyed when people would give me constructive criticism. Mm. But then it's like hard kind but of- But how much of it is actually constructive? Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's like, it's hard navigating the line between someone trying to teach you something and someone just being plain mean yeah. on social media. And, you know, when you're young, you're very- um, perceptible to like anything and everything that people says. <laughs> Thanks for going on a date with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> we should do one night, like night of just Filipino food mm -hmm. and see how far we get. Yeah. We can cook together. I would love that. Yeah, make lumpia together. Oh my God. Well, that'll take, <laughs> we have to do that like during the day and then you- We need to be like a whole group. Yeah. We'll, we'll invite Catherine and Cole. And yeah, Henry. oh my God. <laughs> Teach them how to make lumpia. We'll just give Henry the lumpia and be like, you're over here, <laughs> roll the cigars. We'll be- <laughs> Yeah, we'll have stations. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I would love that. Okay, Me too. that's a plan. <laughs>